This presentation is called, Is Reciprocal Exploitation as Good as Cooperation? And in discussing this, we're going to go back to Robert Tribber's 1971 essay, The Evolution of Reciprocal Altruism. And we've discussed this in an earlier presentation, which you can review as needed. But to summarize very quickly, an altruistic act is where one organism harms its own reproductive success to benefit another. And in our example here, blue has sacrificed to benefit orange. And as a result, the reproductive success of blue has been harmed. And what Trivers argued is that in order for reciprocal altruism to be possible, the harm to blue has to be less than the benefit to orange. And then a second thing that must happen is that orange must reciprocate. So the altruism must flow in the other direction. And now orange has sacrificed to benefit blue, and as a result, orange has been harmed. And once more, the harm to orange must be less than the benefit to blue. And if this is the case, then when we put these acts together and sum up the results, what we're going to find is that the benefit to orange is greater than the harm to B, and the benefit to blue is greater than the harm to orange. And as a result, their joint benefit outweighs the joint harm. And when two organisms act in such a manner as to benefit one another, we call that cooperation. And so indeed it appears that this model shows how altruism can be transformed into cooperation. But not everyone is convinced that the model works. And indeed, when Trivers was writing his paper, as he recalls, Edward Wilson suggested that he take the time to build a better model and suggested that the model that he had wasn't quite right. And William Hamilton suggested that he look at the prisoner's dilemma. And Trivers did discuss the prisoner's dilemma in his essay, but he didn't do very much with it. However, he noted a certain resemblance between a strategy called tit for tat and what he was calling reciprocal altruism. Now, we discussed this in the prior presentation that if we look at the prisoner's dilemma, then what we call altruism from one player's perspective is exploitation from the other's perspective. And this led us to pose a question. Does this mean reciprocal altruism can equally well be called reciprocal exploitation? And if that's the case, does it make sense to suggest that two organisms can benefit one another by alternately exploiting one another? So we might suggest that there's two versions of Trivers' model that are basically the same thing and of equal validity. One we can call reciprocal altruism, as we've discussed, and the second we could call reciprocal exploitation. And the only thing we would change is the perspective that we're looking at it from. And it appears that later uh, Robert Axelrod and William Hamilton noticed this because they noted in their 1984 book, The Evolution of Cooperation, that players cannot get out of their dilemma by taking turns exploiting one another. So why might they have made that argument, which seems to be aimed at a version of Trivers' model? And let's review The Prisoner's Dilemma and the joint outcomes. So we have two options for both players. They can cooperate or exploit one another. And when they both choose to cooperate, the payout is two offspring each, which adds up to four. On the other hand, when blue exploits orange, blue gains three offspring and orange gains none, but the joint outcome is three. And when orange exploits blue, it's just the reverse. Now orange gains three offspring and blue gains none. And in both cases, that's higher than if they behave in a spiteful manner. 
in which case if they both exploit one another simultaneously, they each get two offspring. So it does appear that reciprocal exploitation is a, gives you more reproductive benefit than does spiteful behavior, but it also appears that it's not as good as cooperation. So cooperation is still the largest joint outcome on the board. So let's assume, as we're going to in the next presentation, that the game is played over and over. And if both players choose exploitation, we've shown that they jointly earn two offspring per round, or one apiece. Whereas if they both cooperate, they jointly earn four offspring per round, or two each. So if we imagine that multiple pairs of players are playing the game, and we compare the outcomes of those actions, so we have blue and orange engaged in an exploitative relation, and purple and brown in a cooperative relation, and because they're both exploiting one another simultaneously, blue and orange are gaining two offspring per round, whereas purple and brown are gaining four, that means that each generation, purple and brown have twice as many offspring as blue and orange. And if we ask which pair has found a strategy that gives the highest reproductive success, the answer is purple and brown. They're going to continue to double uh, whatever performance we see out of blue and orange at each generation. So that's not surprising. We know that the cooperative corner does better than the spiteful corner. But what happens if they take turns exploiting one another? So if they alternate exploitation, they jointly earn three offspring per round, but each time all of those offspring go to just one player. However, if they both cooperate, they jointly earn four offspring per round, and it does appear that that's more and a more successful strategy than reciprocal exploitation. So how well do reciprocal exploiters do? Well, let's again make blue and orange the reciprocal exploiters and purple and brown the cooperators. And we've shown that in the first round, one of them will take three offspring and the other none, whereas the cooperators will gain two apiece. And in the second round, the other one will take three offspring and the other none, whereas the cooperators again gain two apiece. And we can see that eight is greater than six, and that similarly, uh, purple and brown are going to stay ahead in their reproductive success over blue and orange. So in their writings, uh, Hamilton and Axelrod wrote that an even chance of exploitation and being exploited is not as good as cooperation, and it appears that they had something like this model in mind, although they didn't work it out in any detail. So is there a better way? Uh, you might be thinking, well, we could approach that differently in how we measure the cost and benefits. But a bigger question is, is there a better way to think about this than the model of reciprocal altruism? And I think the answer is yes, there is. And we're going to introduce that in the next presentation. Thank you for listening.